So in this method, uh, you know, we are going to see about the ensemble model uh, by using R. Okay. So this is what we are going to see here. So uh, in this, we are using a specific data set here. Basically, this is from one of the hackathon data set, and we are using the carrot library here. So uh, the data set uh, looks something like this. So it is about the loan ID, gender, married, dependents, you know, so many. So we will decide about the loan status of by depending upon all these parameters. Okay. So it's a classification data set and uh, we need to decide about so loan status is basically the label so yes or no if you could see here you know yes or no is the the last one okay so the yes or no is nothing but the label whether you know he is eligible to take a loan or not okay this is what it is our data set is all about so if you wanna try this okay so this is the loan uh, this is the complete uh, statistics about your data and about 13 variables are there and 614 observations are there okay and uh, if you could see here so this last one the loan status is basically the yes or no so this basically gives you about whether this is the class label for this okay and uh, here the, uh, there is a little bit of uh, pre-processing which is done over to the data so whether is there any missing data yes there is missing data so you are actually you know going ahead and you know doing all this uh, uh, imputing processes of removing the missing data. Uh, so now the missing data is not there so you could just go through all this so I'm not going into all this so you're just simply using the RAN uh, library you could just explore that a little bit more about it so yes moving on to our business so uh, uh, we are so it's a classification data and we are going to do an simple method so we need to train and test our data uh, so uh, what we have done is that we have done a training splitting of the data so we are splitting the data into training and the testing so if you look at the testing set okay you will get this data okay so this is your test set so test set has got uh, uh, almost about uh, 153 observations and this is your training set so if you look at the training set, uh, set you have got about like 461 observations of 13 uh, variables so these are the training and the testing sets which are available so if you want to look at the uh, dimensions of the training set to have a clear understanding you can have this so there are 13 13 variables one has training set has got more observations and uh, testing set has got 153 observations okay uh, so uh, in order to have a uh, detailed uh, you know training controls okay we are just you know making it into you know um, what to say we are using the cross validation okay so if you want to use the cross validation this is the way of doing it just make sure that you are doing it correctly so and uh, you are also setting the uh, the predictors like you know the independent variables which you are taking for predicting the loan status and this out outcome name is basically the loan status so loan status is nothing but uh, the dependent variable and these are all the independent variables okay so hope you are able to understand that so these are the predictors and these are the you know uh, target variable so this is the target variable and this target variable is basically predicted only based on these uh, you know uh, uh, these independent variables we have 13 different uh, uh, independent variables but we are taking only these many so this is the meaning of it so that's where we are we are setting them and then moving uh, you know, further, we are going to predict the model, okay, we are going to build the model. So we are, use, we are actually you know, building the model by using the first one is basically random forest. So when you look at the random forest, uh, uh, it's very simple. So you know that you, know, you, are, you have your training set, okay. So the train set of the predictors is given and the output name is given and the method is RF, so it's a random forest and uh, then you know you are fit control because you are doing a cross validation here so we have already made it as a uh, as a function so we are just calling those function here and the tune length so tune length you are giving it as three so this tuning parameter this is basically the tuning parameter or the optimization parameter so you can either give this as uh, by yourself or you could just make it as default so whichever way so we are just giving it as tuning length as three so it is just the optimization parameter which we give it to them so we could just run this particular statement yes it's all good and uh, then uh, we are applying the thing upon the uh, testing model so we are just going to predict by using the uh, by using so here the model dots if you, if you look at the object you could see that predict of object is equal to we are using this model uh, model dot rf and then we are applying that upon the test set and the predictors and we are just trying to make sure that what is the predicting output which is which we are going to get and one major thing which I wanted to uh, tell you is that so after that you know it is always better to have a uh, to to in order to get an understanding of it you can use the confusion matrix so when you use the confusion matrix you can have the predictors and the 
uh, uh, predictor comma actual or you can have actual comma because both ways it works but only thing is, is just make sure that you know uh, the values are uh, all you know factorized and they are same okay they should be at the same level because equal number of uh, values has to be there okay so for that uh, you have to make sure that you are working that and you are getting it so here uh, uh, when you when you look at the values you will get the complete statistics about how many this is a confusion matrix of this uh, related to the data and you are getting almost like 79.74 percent accuracy it is not uh, you know not bad so you've got 79 here and uh, then if you try this uh, you know out here with the uh, logistic regression okay if you oh, you can actually try here this with the logistic regression so for the logistic regression you have got almost around 81.5 uh, percent so it is better and uh, then you could actually try it with the test set okay so when you try it with test sets you know uh, and if you try for you know if you, if you could just see for one you could see all the probabilities which are listed there for this particular <coughs> linear regression and then you could actually decide like you know whether you have to take the normal average or the majority or the weighted average according to whatever you want you can basically you know take those kind of methods to work on with the uh, uh, work on with and take for the further you know so which one has to be contributed to your uh, set of predictions you could actually take them okay so this is how it will work say if you want to see this uh, predict you know majority so this is the way you could see so this is how it is and uh, now uh, uh, so in order to show you like as we have seen in the bagging and the boosting okay uh, in the in the stacking in the uh, rapid minor I just want to show you the same thing in here so this is all the same only so we are using the same uh, data set uh, so it's all the same so I am also using the training and the setting and the predictors you have uh, the the target variable everything is all the same so there is no difference so it's the same data set which we have seen now so I'm not explaining it again then we are creating the three different models so till here it's everything is the same only there is no difference so we are creating but here only difference is that we are say if we are stacking you can create a base model then upon that you can create a top model Okay. so I just want to show you that so you are creating a base model so when you when you look at here uh, you are actually creating the base model okay you are creating a base layer model for training data and then you are actually you know uh, with the fold prediction probabilities you are actually predicting the model with that so if you look at here you are actually you know using the model dot r and you know three different models exactly the same okay but you are actually you know creating three different base models then you are using the same models which you have created for testing for testing on the test data so here if you see you are actually testing with the same predictors which you have used so when you look at here you know you are looking for the y okay so you are actually predicting the uh, on the test data now the next one is that you so your base model is created you have tested it up on the data now we are going to create a top layer model okay so it's kind of a stacking okay so here you have two different one is the gradient boosting model and the other one is the um, which one is that uh, uh, another one is the logistic model so these are the two different models which you are creating so uh, the predictors for the top layer model what you are going to do is that the three different models which you have got from the previous base layer model you are combining them together and you are you are making this predictors top so this is the one which I want you so this is the ensemble that you are actually creating here so it's an ensemble which is actually created here you're combining all this so it's a combiner which will combine all the three different models and you are actually creating a new model called predictors dot uh, top and you are using that in the GBM model say if you if you look at the GBM model this gradient uh, boost boosting model if you could see that you are using this combination of these three models here in the training set and uh, so this is what I want you to understand here so uh, so this way it's also possible so when you look at it you will get all the predictions here so you are actually creating the model and you're working on the training set right now you can actually you know predict the uh, pre you are using you are getting the you are actually predicting it with the help of the predict using the top layer model okay with the predictions of bottom layer model that has been made for the testing data so you have already made a model for the testing data with the lower layer model now upon that you are going to predict again so it's kind of a double kind of prediction so it's kind of a stacked prediction so that is what I just want to show you so when you look at here you are actually using this model GBM G, uh, which, which is actually you know which is actually created and uh, 
you are using that so this this G, it's gbm you know the and this is the stacked one so when you when you look at it you will get it like this and you are also using by using this uh, um, the glm model okay when you when you look at that you know yeah it's it's some some issues has happened but otherwise you know no it was normally working uh, it was working fine with the help of this prediction um, so this is how it will work okay so this is how it will work basically yes now it's working fine it was not running it has not run properly so i just uh, ran it again so it just worked okay so this is the glm model and i'm using this glm model again here and i'm getting the output okay so it's working fine so this is what it is so i just wanted to show you about the how to build a stacked model uh, by using the uh, ensemble method so you can use all these you know ensemble methods for better evaluations and comparisons of uh, you know data and will always give you a uh, you know, better result uh, than earlier so this is how it works okay so thank you so much so i think you know hope you got an idea about you know how the sensible models work and you could try out your own end and you know try to come out with different models svm try svm you know so just when you try with different models the major thing which you have to keep in mind is that you know uh, the parameters which you take for each and every model has to be you know same so if there is any you know a conversion of the data to be done you have to do that so all those things has to be taken care in your mind and then whether you're going for the majority one voting or you're going for weighted average or average what is the kind of the voting which you're using so so all those things you know you could actually keep in mind when you do this and uh, uh, another thing is that when in when it comes to ensemble method so you have different type of models which are available so stacking and uh, sequential or you know parallel so these are the three different methods which is basically available so you have booging, uh, boosting and bagging and single classifier so boosting it, it it starts from one and its output is actually given as input to the another model it just goes out if it is all parallel it's bagging or otherwise it's a single classifier so uh, these are the things and uh, another term which you will hear is that the base learners and the meta learner which will help you it's, it acts as a combiner and it will help you to come out with the final prediction which we have seen in the R. So that's all. So hope you understood a little bit about you know how Ensemble works. Now you can explore more about it. If you have any questions you can always get back to me. Thank you so much.